Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Um, thank you for taking the time to come join the Savant uh, training with the 9-3 program introduction. Just a quick intro from me, I'm Dan Ross with Savant. I'm the director of distribution. I also support Savant uh, in the builder sales and MDU and, and large scale opportunities across the country. I'm supported here in the Houston branch uh, by Savant sales, uh, Texas based sales engineer DT Frank and also by Matt Wilbanks, um, who works for Momentum Marketing here as our local representative in uh, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Um, here's my contact information as you need it, and I will just add briefly that I'm not an engineer. I got two guys in the back that are way smarter than me if we want to dig into the weeds, and uh, we have a full demo running outside, and we can really dig in to the more technical side of things afterwards, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have uh, during the presentation. If it's something I want to push off to the end, then I'll push it off to the end. But any uh, specific questions you have, I'll be happy to answer them as we go through this. Whenever I introduce uh, Savan, I always like to talk about who we are as a company, where we came from, and of course why we're here today, and then where we're going over the next five to ten years. Um, Savan's been around for 14 years now. We became a company back in 2004. Before Savant, there was a predecessor company called Excel Telecommunications that was founded by our, our current CEO and founder, Bob Madonna. Uh, Excel Telecommunications basically changed global telecommunications by taking hard-coded uh, hard based switching, and he built what was called, what's today called the soft switch, which is a software-based switching environment for global telecommunications. It changed the way global telecom was done. And in the late 90s, Lucent Technologies, AT&T, acquired Excel, switch, Excel switching for a significant amount of money because they could not replicate uh, the technology that he had created and patented within Excel Telecom. Excel Telecom today uh, still has switchers all around the world that support, that support global telecom. Uh, so where Savant came to fruition out of that story was after we sold that company, he had a couple bucks in his pocket and he installed a complex and expensive home automation system in his new uh, New York loft and every day that he came home there was a programmer in his house working on it and uh, Bob is a, as a uh, very smart both hardware and software engineer. He kept saying to himself, it can't be this difficult you know, for me to walk into a house and hit a welcome home scene and have my house light up. Why is there a programmer here charging me thousands and thousands of dollars to make this work? So we ripped that six-figure system out of his loft and put in another very expensive six-figure system. Same result, right? And so he got his Excel telecom team back together and said, hey guys, there's something wrong in the luxury automation marketplace. Things shouldn't be this expensive and this complex to deploy. And they took a look at it and they said, holy crap, this is the same problem we fixed in telecom. People are using hard-coded, extremely time-consuming processes to deploy large-scale automation systems. So Savant was founded in essentially uh, 2005. Three years of software development was created and then we launched a product in 2007. Um, over the years, um, obviously, we're, you guys may have heard, Savant's very uh, known as kind of the Apple automation company. Our software is built on OSX platform. Uh, we're not specific to iOS in any specific way. We support Android as much as we support iOS, but our core software is written on OSX, which is, we find is the most reliable operating system out there. Um, so over the years, we grew very rapidly. Uh, we, chose, we chose Apple's OSX system well before they were cool, so to say, before they were the richest company in the world, or one of them. Um, but over the years as Apple grew, we certainly rode those coattails. And because of our, our back-end software, we, we were able to deploy large-scale automation systems in 50 to 75% less time than our competitors in the luxury space. Today you see those specific companies that I'm talking about. One is completely left residential and gone full commercial. The other one is 90% commercial and only 10% residential. So clearly there is a better way to do things today in residential home automation whether it's small, quick cookie cutter systems or whether they're extremely vast systems like a super yacht or a mega mansion or something like that. Savant prides itself on being able to do either or. Uh, so that's kind of who we are. Uh, we're gonna cover the system architecture. I've got some components up here that kind of fall under the Savant umbrella. Savant is a manufacturer. We're not just a, a control company. Uh, as much as we control other third party devices, you know, like Lutron Lighting or Sonos Media Players, we also build everything ourselves, 
right? So we manufacture our own lighting line. We manufacture our own controllers, our own processors, our own audio, our own video, our own remotes. We do everything ourselves. Coming from telecom, our, our manufacturing prowess is way beyond any of our competitors in the, in the space around manufacturing hardware. Uh, our failure rate on hardware is a sub 1% failure rate, and the average for the industry is a 2 to 3% failure rate, right? So when you're dealing with Savant hardware, you're dealing with a much lower failure rate, which means less truck rolls for you guys as integrators, which means more profit. We're going to talk about several different solutions today. At the beginning, we're going to spend about 15 to 20 minutes just on all the different user interfaces. As you guys all know, as integrators, at the end of the day, the customer doesn't care about the black boxes that are in a closet somewhere. They care about how they're interacting with their system, whether that be a TV remote, whether it be an application on an Android or iOS device, whether it be a touch panel, whether it be a thermostat, whether it be voice control. So we're going to talk about all the different ways to interact with the system, and that's certainly an area where Savant wins. We currently, I would say, dominate the marketplace as far as a user interface across all control companies go today. We'll go through the different types of controllers. How do we control third-party devices like audio video receivers, TVs, lighting, whatever it may be. We're going to cover some of our audio and video solutions, really hone in on Savant's um, audio distribution, media, and amplifier all-in-one solutions. Uh, we're going to cover Savant lighting line, and then I'm going to introduce you guys to the brand new, just launched Savant Multistat. We will finish with software. And I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek at something that Savant is about to launch here in the next 30 to 60 days, which will truly change the industry just like Savant changed the industry uh, over 14 years ago with the introduction of our Blueprint software. Throughout the spiel, um, I'll try and give you guys as many competitive advantage. I don't necessarily uh, want to point out any individual control company. You guys will pick up who I'm talking about and who I'm not. I believe in... Uh, a good automation install is good for everybody, and uh, not everybody is perfect when it comes to the control world. Everybody wins in their certain areas, but I will talk about Savant's competitive advantages in the marketplace, and I have no problem talking about where we uh, maybe have a disadvantage, for instance. So, Like I mentioned, scalable solutions for every customer, whether it's an entry-level one-room solution or whether it's a 300-foot mega yacht, Savant can handle those scale of projects. Easy to install today and easy to upgrade. With what I'm going to show you at the end, the installation and upgrade process becomes even easier. And you're going to hear me talk a lot about personalization. There's two things in automation and control. There's personalization and there's customization. If you guys have worked with products like Crestron, AMX, or RTI in the past, you guys are very familiar with customization in which you guys customize that user experience. Personalization is when the homeowner personalizes their technology experience with the system that you professionally deployed for them. So we'll talk a lot about that within the UIs. Before we move into a quick app demo, I want you guys to understand the basic foundational architecture of a Savant system, starting with the host. And we're going to talk about this in more detail in a second. But the Savant host is the epicenter. It is our processor. We use the term host because it came from our telecom past. But it's a processor. This is the, this is the main processor. It's a computer that runs the entire home. Savant is a single host architecture, meaning there will only ever be one Savant processor in any one residence. There is no need to ever have multiple Savant processors in a home. We have multiple levels of processors. Today, we're going to be primarily talking about our S2, which is this guy right here. Um, after this initial training, if you guys want to learn more about some of the more advanced or, or bigger processors, we can talk about that offline. Uh, we're going to talk, obviously, uh, part of the architecture, you have to have a user interface, right? Whether it's a lighting keypad, whether it's voice control, there has to be a way to interact with the system. And how we scale systems up is through adding controllers, right? I have more TVs. I have a room with a media center in it. You know, I can just drop a small controller and control those rooms. And we'll talk about the different types of controllers. And of course, nowadays, it didn't used to be this way, but now the primary host in that house comes with a controller on it as well. So all your IRs, your 232s, your serials, GPIOs, contact closures, and even a doorbell interrupt service is available right out of the processor. So that's our host architecture. I want to jump into an app demo. 
Uh, before I do that, Savant just launched a new UI video on uh, YouTube, so I figured I'd show that to you guys real quick since it is brand new. So let me play that for you, and then I'll go through an actual demo of the app. So this is just a quick demo on the user experience. At Savant, we give you lots of choices for user interfaces. We put a lot of thought and effort into making sure that the things you do all the time are very quick and easy to find. Our user interfaces are simple and easy to navigate and consistent across devices. So whether you're using your mobile device, an in-wall touch panel, or the Savant remote, the commands and feel is very simple. Your Savant touch control screens wake up as you approach them, and you can set them to specifically control the room that you're in. Uh, with Savant interfaces, it's really easy to find what you need to do, both for you and your guests. You want uh, your babysitter, your grandmother, anyone coming over your house to be able to pick up the Savant remote and very quickly and easily find what they want to do. Once you have your home set up just the way you like it, say for relaxing or for a dinner party, you can then capture that as a scene very quickly and easily. Scenes can be scheduled for certain times of day or for certain events. So for example, at sunrise, your lights turn on, your shades open up, and maybe your music starts playing. Different people want different types of control. Some users just use scenes, and others really like to get deep into the Savant interface for fine-grained control, where they say, hey, I want that specific light one way, that specific light another, the shades, a very specific setting, and they want to get into that level of detail. We give you all those options with the Savant interface. Voice control is one of the most natural ways to control your Savant system. You can recall a scene, turn your lights on and off, and much more. The voice control inside the Savant remote let you say commands quickly and easily. In addition, we have some amazing technology uh, such as True Image, which lets you see the light you want to control and the actual state of that light in the mobile device. Whatever color that light is with your Savant smart bulbs, we actually show you that in the interface. It's kind of the type of thing where you kind of need to, to see it, to believe it, but uh, it really does update what your room will look like with different colors of light, different brightnesses of light in the app, and then actually that happens in real life as well. Savant has always been an innovator in the home automation industry. Why? Research, innovation, and passion. So I'm going to jump in and give you guys a, a deeper dive into the Pro8 app itself. I'm going to show you guys how to both capture and build scenes, how your homeowners would create their own scenes. We understand that it is not a profitable business choice to spend your lives reprogramming existing customer systems to fit their need for that specific week. Uh, say the time zone changes, right? Should it be on you guys to roll a truck out there to potentially change the lighting an hour earlier so that their lights come on an hour earlier? Give me just a second. We're going to sync this guy up here. There we go. So we talk about personalization. You hear that a lot. And I always say everybody in this room doesn't wear the same pair of jeans. Everybody in this room doesn't drive the same vehicle. Why should everybody in this room have to interact with their technology the exact same way? A lot of our competitors in the market force you down a single user interface avenue or the other option is you guys all have to spend an incredible amount of time customizing through programming that personalization for them, which isn't personalization because they're not doing it, you're doing it for them, so it's custom. We play in both worlds, but really to be super profitable, to deploy more systems quicker and, and really spend your time scaling systems up and selling new ones, we put personalization at the end user level. So from the home screen, this is not my house in the background. Any homeowner, once they have their system, they can change out the image of the app in the background to a picture of their house, to a picture of their family, to a picture of their dog. It doesn't matter. Um, so from the home screen, on the bottom tab here, you have your, oh, I lost my, well, I'll just run through you real quick for the room right here. Hopefully it's being recorded on there for you guys in the field and you guys can see it. On the bottom here, you have your service bar. That's every service in the entire home. So if I were to select lighting, for instance, 
I can globally see every single room with lighting automation in it. I could turn a room on or off, but I could also go into a room and I can manage every single load independently. We also have custom presets for lighting that you guys can create. You guys can customize lighting scenes for each individual room. And you guys, there's also a standard that we build into the user interface, which is things like dim, mid, off, built in. We got it. Hopefully that holds. Uh, if I were to go into my climate, I can access any thermostat in that house. So what I'm trying to drive home here is from the home page, it is global access. So if I'm remote and I'm accessing my home remotely, I'm going to use this scroll bar down here to access the home room because I can see everything. I'll talk more about it, but if you hit the top, what I call the hamburger, the three lines up here, you get your room view, right? So if I was in the kitchen, I would use the kitchen view. Again, this is personalized. This is a, this is a, view, this is a picture of my kitchen. The homeowner, the end user, takes these pictures and personalizes the way the app looks. You guys, don't, you guys can do it for them. You guys can give them that white glove service and provide those images for them, whether it's taking a picture directly from the app or even uploading it. Again, take a picture of your daughter or your son for their room uh, or take a, or take a well-designed interior picture. Additionally, from the home screen, you have your scenes page. And we, you saw that quickly in the video, which is the scene generator. We have the strongest scene generator in the industry by a, by a long shot. We are leaps and bounds ahead of our competitors in this area. So the first thing I'm going to walk you guys through is building a scene. On the top of the scene page, there's a plus button. When I hit that plus button, I have the op op opportunity to capture or build a scene. Capture, as what you saw in the video, means everything is just the way I like it, and I'm hitting capture, and I'm saving it. Basically, we capture what the processor is currently, the current state of everything in that house. If I hit build, this is for those guys that want to deep dive. This is basically what a lot of you guys do when you're customizing scenes for customers through a Crestron, RTI, or another type of control system. I can basically say, I want the shades in the master bedroom, the east windows, to open up to 50%. And let's assume I'm creating a good morning scene, a, a good morning scene for my work week from 7 a, at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. So I'm going to say, I want those shades to open up. What else do I want to happen? I just hit a button and I say, okay, additionally, I want the lighting. I want the lighting in the kitchen. I want these specific lighting loads to get to this level. I hit done. I hit next. What else do I want to happen? I want, I want my favorite music, savant music, to play Tidal in the kitchen while I'm cooking my breakfast. We'll crank it up a little bit. Next. Say that's the services I wanted for my good morning scene. I hit next. The next page is a scheduler. Do I want to schedule the scene or, I don't, or don't I? If I don't want to schedule it, I just hit next and I go past it. If I want to schedule the scene, I can say, hey, a specific time, like 7 a.m., but I can also make it relative to celestial time. And I can say, uh, let's see, sunrise, and I want it to happen 10 minutes before sunrise. So I want my shades to come up in my master bedroom 10 minutes before the sunrise so that natural sunlight wakes me up in the morning. And then I can select what days I want it to operate. So I could say, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is when I want this scene scheduled for. I hit next. The next page is global. Do I want this scene to be shared? Meaning, do I want other users in the household to see this scene? We, we don't only think about a, a house as a, as a independent person that wants to interact with their technology. We look at every individual inside that house as an individual uh, person interacting with technology. So mom, daughter, son, and dad uh, may all see a different user interface on their devices. But if I make this scene, this good morning scene shared, it's going to populate on all the user's devices. It's also going to populate on things like the Savant touch panel and the Savant multi-stat thermostat. So it's accessible around the house from anywhere. I hit next. I have to name that scene. I can create a custom name for it, or I can select one of our, our pre-configured names, like Good Morning. And again, I have to choose an image for that scene. I can take a picture. If it was a dinner scene and I had a T-bone steak on my plate, I could take a picture of that T-bone steak, and that's the image for my scene. I'll select a bar of soap here. I'll hit Save, and we are writing the code 
basically in the background here rather than you guys have to do it individually. And that quick, I have my morning scene scheduled Monday through Friday, 10 minutes before sunrise. A series of events are going to happen. All I have to do is highlight the timer. That activates the timer. I can deactivate the timer just by touching it. There's a globe in the top left corner of the morning scene that tells me it's global. It's available everywhere, available everywhere. And in the future, if I want to edit this scene, change the timer, or simply delete this, the scene out of the system, I can do that in just a single button press. Wouldn't you guys like your homeowners to be programming all their custom automation scenes in the future rather than you guys burning hours doing it for them? I mean, that's what we've created in this scene generator. We've empowered the homeowners, whether a four-year-old child or a 90-year-old grandmother, to do their own home automation. Capture is very similar. It's just, I've just walked around the house, put everything just the way I like it, and then I select a subset of rooms that I want to capture, <coughs> and it sends me right into the scheduler. So it's just a quicker way to build a scene if you didn't want to build it independently. And lastly, I want to jump out of this in case the field is not seeing this, but I do want to talk about real quickly about user management. User management is built into the app as well. There's usually a master in that house, the mom or the dad, usually the mom, and she can delegate what Chloe, the 10-year-old daughter, has access to. He can say, hey, Chloe does not have access to the master bedroom, does not have access to the master bathroom. And they can also say, Chloe does not have access to the security system or the climate. That means on her iPad, on her iPhone 10X that she's sitting in third grade with, she's simply not going to see those rooms or those services. They are not going to populate on her device. So user management built into the app as well. So that's uh, what I, my recommendation to all of you guys is to download the Savant Pro 8 app. There's a demonstration mode. That's exactly what I was showing you right there. Uh, so that's what I use as a Savant salesperson myself. I use that application, whether I'm talking to a builder, a developer, an end user, or an integrator that was using a, a, a previous or legacy uh, control system, that is what I show them at the, to around the value of Savant. There's nothing else like it in the industry, and nobody has come close to catching up to us yet as far as the Savant Pro 8 app experience. All right, getting back into it. I mentioned global scenes. Global scenes means available everywhere. You make it global, it's going to populate on your touch panels and other user interfaces around the house. You can move scenes around. If certain users are using specific scenes more often than others, you just press and hold and you move them to put them in the, in the place that you want them based on your usage. And each individual user within that household can all put their scenes a specific way. We have a sleep timer built into both the app as well as the Savant Pro remote in which a single button press on the power button gives you the option to to sleep time an individual service, like a TV service, or you can sleep time the entire room. So it's common for me to sleep time my entire bedroom when I go to bed, which turns my lights off, closes my shades, and turns the TV off, right? So you can sleep time either a service or an entire room directly from the Pro 8 app or the Pro Remote. Uh, you're gonna hear me talk about 8.8. 8.8 .8 is the latest software release from Savant. Uh, one of the cool things that we added into 8.8, if you're using Savant's uh, IP audio solutions, then we now have EQing built in right into the Pro 8 app. So of course, you can configure these on behalf of your customer. If your customer is a big time audio file and they want to mess with it, they can mess with it right from the app and you don't have to remote into the system and do it for them. Some additional new features that we added in the latest 8.8 .8 update, in addition to EQing, is we brought volume back on every single page or service or room that has volume in it. There used to be a separate button you had to push to bring the volume control uh, forward. Now you don't have to do that. It's a shortcut. You can now, the homeowner can now configure the buttons. They're what I call hot buttons, the most commonly used buttons from their TV or direct TV remote, and they can place them where they want to directly on the app. So obviously more personalization versus customization. The quicker you guys can get in jobs and out of jobs, the more profitable your companies are. No question about that. Another thing you saw briefly in the video 
is some advancements around our lighting user interface. We are taking a deep dive. We partner with USAI Lighting. We're taking a deep dive into lighting, into the zirconian rhythms, uh, into the different types of white lights, and of course, the RGBW spectrum. We have, Savant has its own line of RGBW bulbs, as well as RGD, RGBW uh, lighting strips. And now that's all built into the interface, so you can truly pinpoint uh, the types of color you want in the different rooms. The next user interface we're going to talk about is the Savant Pro Remote. Uh, we've got one of these guys live on the demo system outside. The Savant Pro Remote, again, this is an area where I think most of us would agree Savant wins when it comes to a remote in the CI industry. Designed by Ammunition, which is a company that comes out of uh, Johnny Ives from Apple's Mindshare. His understudy started Ammunition, so they did the design. Uh, there's seven layers of heated glass on this screen, which you can swipe. Very similar to the glass that's on your iPhone XX. These two products are manufactured on the same lines. So very much an Apple-esque feel here on the Savant Pro remote. Just like on the Pro 8 app, all of your services are listed. You select a service like DirecTV. You've got all your favorite channels, right? So each, each user can pick up the remote, select themselves as a user, and all their favorite channels populate. So they can personalize the remote as well. If you need your numbers, your hard numbers are right here on the remote. If you had to push, enter 206 or something like that. And then lastly, all your scenes are available on the remote as well. So you walk in the house, you can just hit your movie night scene, and that's going to trigger the AVR to come on, the surround sound to come on. It's going to trigger your blinds to drop, all from the remote. And as you saw in the video, voice control is also built into the remote as well. Savant was the very first company to introduce voice control on a remote level several years ago when we introduced this remote. A quick hint at something coming forward. If any of you guys watched the WWDC a couple weeks ago from Apple, Savant was featured uh, by Apple in the introduction of Siri voice control, which we will be building directly into this remote. So we will be using Siri as voice control at the remote level. And it was a nice shout out from Apple uh, to Savant at the WWDC. Um, some other things about the remote. There's two versions of this remote. There's a Bluetooth BLE version and there's a Wi-Fi version. Haven't talked much about it, but Savant is at 802.11. I know you heard that during the Luxol presentation. Uh, Savant is an 802.11 Wi-Fi company. That's what we prefer for communications. Why do we do that? Speed. Wi-Fi is much quick. 802.11 is a hell of a lot quicker than Zigbee and Z-Wave are. Security. Right? 802.11 is what the Pentagon and the White House use for secure systems and scalability. There's no limitation to scale as long as you have a reliable network in our ecosystem. So you're in, and then the other side is Bluetooth mesh, right? So we use a BLE mesh. The two versions of this remote are a Bluetooth version and a Wi-Fi version. What's the main difference outside the $300 MSRP value of the remote? Is the Bluetooth version is a single room remote. It is dedicated to the room that it's in. The remote is physically bound to its base station. If the dog eats the base station, you've got to replace them both. If the dog eats the remote, you've got to replace them both. It is a Bluetooth connectivity. The remote connects to the base station via Bluetooth. The base station then communicates back to our processor via Wi-Fi. That means you have a 30-foot distance between these two products before this guy starts saying, hey, man, I lost connection, at which time you have to bring it closer. Right? That could be a frustration for some people unless it's a dedicated remote in their media room, in their master bedroom, and it's not leaving. That brings up the use case of why we introduced the Wi-Fi remote. The Wi-Fi remote doesn't care where this guy is. He only needs him to charge. That's the only reason why he needs this guy is to recharge his batteries. This guy can go as far away from the base station. It can access any TV in any room. Here in Texas, we've got a lot of outdoor TVs. A lot of people don't want to leave a $500 TV remote outside, but now they can take their kitchen remote, their living room, room remote, I don't care if you call it the downstairs remote, they can grab that, they can take it outside and it will use that outdoor TV. So depending on the job type, if it's a one room system, it's very common to see this guy because it's a one room system. When you start doing whole home automation, you start to see a lot more of the Wi-Fi versions being deployed because they're roaming the house. 
Battery life on this guy off the base station is about five to six days. I've lived with these things forever. I don't use iPads in my house anymore. This remote is so powerful as a user, in, uh, as a user interface. Uh, I've had a ton of luck with these guys. I just ordered some of these guys for my home. Um, I do hear they connect so fast and you never have that connection issue, so a lot of people like them. Uh, both are available through Wave. Now, the next what I'm going to show you, oh, let's go through here. Just some cool things. You can capture scenes directly from the remote. You have user management built into the remote, so you can select any user. Their scenes, their favorites will populate. Voice control. Full metadata feedback with products like Sonos or Savant Music, where you'll get all the cover art right on the remote. And of course, as you saw earlier, True Image, which is a patented technology from Savant in which the room reflects the app real time for lighting. So you could tap the light on the remote, it will turn on in the room, and it will turn on in the remote interface. But we have to fight that battle of, but you don't have the hard buttons on here. <laughs> uh, in this world, you don't really need hard buttons because everything is uh, favorite based or scene based. Nonetheless, we just launched with 8.8. .8 the Savant hard button. We call this a single room remote. It is an RF communication. It has a local IR and RF controller at the physical TV location that it communicates to. It takes two AA batteries. You can beat up on it. You're not going to hurt it. You can program or, or, or create three scenes on that remote level, but that's it, right? So you could tie a, a uh, welcome home, a good night and a movie time scene onto those three guys. This is designed for those secondary rooms or for those customers that are simply not interested in a touch screen, right? And those guys are out there. We are working on a version of this where you can't swipe, where it stays on a single page, right? For those people that don't like swiping. Um, so we've got a solution for every type of customer out there. The next user interface we're going to talk to, um, and Holly, just keep me on time if I start to go over. Do you have one question? Yeah. When will the Wi-Fi version be available? Yeah, so the question was, uh, when is the Savant Wi-Fi remote available? Uh, Wave just placed their stocking order for it last week, so it should be here um, this week. So it's available for you guys right now for order and shipping. The next user interface we're talking about is the Savant touch panel. Uh, back in 2010, um, our founder and CEO, Bob Madonna, is a very forward-thinking guy. At that time, 2007, 2008, 2009, very much like the Crestron and AMXs, we were building very expensive, very clunky glass touch panels that went in the wall that cost anywhere from $3,000 to $25,000. And they worked most of the time, and they were really expensive. And then the iPad got announced. And we end of life our glass touch panels the day the iPad was launched. Savant was the first app launched on the iPad for home automation and control. And everybody said that was going to kill us because we were no longer selling ridiculously expensive glass touch panels that were clunky and broke a bunch. Uh, and we rode that iPad train pretty hard. Um, and we, we did very well with it, obviously. You saw all the other control companies follow suit behind Savant and introduce their docking stations and iPad apps. However, fast forward seven years from that, um, I'm not that big of a fan of iPads in my house anymore. I have my iPorts that just sit there because I'm tired of the software updates. I'm tired of the, I have to hit three buttons just to get to my Savant app so that I can turn a light on or activate a scene, which is why we introduced a family of Savant touch panels. Obviously, the cost, the reliability, and the overall clunkiness of touch panels has changed drastically in the last seven years from a technology perspective. This is an Android glass panel. It mirrors the user interface of the ProWade app. Hopefully, you guys are seeing something. Consistency, consistency, consistency around user experience and the user interface. You can program these to be specific for a room, to be specific for a floor, to be specific for the whole house. There is a motion sensor on here, so when you walk by it, it can light up. You guys can determine to what brightness and for how long it stays on for. Uh, single PoE, single gang, portrait only for the five and a, five and a half inch. And then we have a larger one that's uh, an eight inch, which is a dual gang, single PoE. 
They come in both white and black. Any questions on the touch panels, user interfaces up to now? Yes, yeah, so the question was, is it portrait only on the five and a half inch versus landscape? So yes, the five and a half inch is portrait only. Has to go like this. The eight inch is portrait or landscape either way. Both are single PoE. Yes, there is. So now these guys fit pretty dang close. I just put them in my house and so they, they mirror up pretty good, but we did partner with WallSmart and they offer a flush mount for our touch panels. Again, what's that? Wall smart. So if you're looking for a flush mount, uh, we haven't introduced those through Wave yet. We certainly can and have that discussion to make them available here, but you can also order them directly through Wall Smart. Again, very similar to the app. Again, this human-centered lighting that we talked about with the ProWaite app, that's available on your touch panels as well. That true reflection of what the room actually is at that moment is reflected inside the actual user interfaces. For you guys that do commercial installations, boardrooms, things like that, there is a tabletop dock for our 8-inch touch panel. So if you need, a lot of conference rooms don't like putting iPads in there because of how much they can do with them versus locking down a, touch, a proprietary touch panel for that individual conference room. Next user interface we're going to talk about is voice control. Um, I like this. We're like 30 minutes in and we're still talking about user interfaces. Obviously, it's, uh, it's the most important part of, a, of a, the savant world. Um, late last year, we introduced Amazon Alexa. Uh, it was amazing watching through our cloud architecture how many systems were adding Amazon Alexa into existing savant homes, which means they were upgrading their system and adding voice control in. There's no programming behind this. You download the Amazon Alexa app. Uh, you tell it to uh, uh, learn the savant language, and then you tell it to discover devices. And it reaches out to our processor, and it learns the rooms, the lighting loads, the scenes, the favorites. The only thing you guys need to be aware of is if the homeowner is creating more scenes from the Pro8 app, the only way Alexa is going to know about those new scenes is if you tell Alexa to discover Savant devices again, and she will then reach back out and she'll learn all the new stuff that was created. So Amazon Alexa has been really good. We're currently in development with their new Alexa version 3, their V3, which has a lot more uh, capabilities from voice control because today you are still saying, Alexa, turn on, welcome home. Alexa, turn on, good night. You know, that's the way that she communicates today. Uh, the new V3 has a little bit more flexibility into it. For your customers that are Google customers and not Amazon customers, I'm, I'm enjoying watching this big Amazon-Google battle happening in the background, you know, with the Nest acquisition, the Ring acquisitions, you know, there's a big uh, Fortune 5 battle going on around smart home. Uh, obviously, uh, Amazon Alexa, from a marketing perspective, is leaps and bounds ahead of Google and Apple's HomePod for voice control. However, with 8.8, we just launched Google, and from, from what I'm hearing is that Google's back-end voice control architecture is significantly more advanced than what Amazon Alexa can do, because obviously they're using the Google engine. Um, so this is now available and fully supported through Savant as well for voice control. All right, so we're done with UIs. Um, sometimes this presentation takes me like two and a half to three hours, so I'm going pretty quick. If you guys need me to slow down, just, just slow me down. Um, we're kind of going to get into the hardware now, right? So we talked about the advantages of all the user experience, the user interfaces. No question that's where we dominate the market. Nobody has put the time, energy, money, and R&D into user experiences than Savant has. Um, and as you guys can see across all user interfaces, we do a pretty good job of both of, of leveraging both personalization at the homeowner level as well as customization at your guys' level as a service that you provide your customers. All right, so let's dig into the, the Savant Smart Host. The one we're going to focus on today uh, for the sake of time is the S2 processor. Just real quick, it is a host and controller combined. Outside of the Intel quad-core processor chip that's inside of this beautifully designed guitar pick, <laughs> um, there is an embedded controller as well. So you've got six IRs, two 232s, 
one GPIO, one, re one relay, and an audio interrupter doorbell service that you can tie out of it. We launched this at Cedia last year. Uh, before the launch of the S2 processor, the entry level cost for Savant was a minimum $1,500 MSRP processor. And so if we look at what C4 was doing with their entry level EA1 platform, they were going to market at $600 MSRP for a single room solution. And if you wanted to do a single room solution with Savant, just the processor was $1,500 MSRP. We were more than double them. And clearly, we know that they're selling a lot of EA1s across a multitude of channels. And now Savant has something that not only directly competes with it, but has way more functionality than it. I always talk about Savant. Uh, I heard the Luxol guy say this is, we're not the cheapest brand. Savant is a luxury brand. We will always be more expensive than companies like C4 or RTI or URC is because of our user interface. We provide so much more value through our user interfaces and of course our reliability uh, and R&D that we put into our products. So let me tell you guys real quickly about what the S2 processor is capable of. It's Corely designed, you guys saw in the UI, we focused on rooms, you saw the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, we're very room focused in the way that we think about things. And how we limit our processors normally is around zones of audio or video. So the S2 processor supports two rooms of video. So think about multi-room AVRs or an AVR in each room. But really think about a job that only has two zones of TV, right? These are more smaller cookie cutter jobs, but there's a lot of them out there. Uh, and you can see that it's almost 60% of C4's business is those little tiny cookie cutter jobs. So the S2 is what we're using to take that, take that market share away. So this guy will do two rooms of video and an additional four zones of audio. So total zones of audio is six zones of audio, two televisions, right? You would never use a Just Add Power or a Savant Matrix switch with this processor. You would just use AVRs or just local TV control not video switching. Our other processors all handle video centralized video distribution. But again, an additional four zones. We assume that those two video zones are going to have audio in them. It's a pretty good assumption. And then we can do an additional four zones of audio, whether you're using a Savant audio matrix or whether you're using a product like Sonos. This is not a pretty slide for you guys that are uh, on, online remotely. But I want to talk about the controllers real quick. I always say that Savant may be more expensive up front, and that's true most of the time. We want to be. It's intentional. We are not diving to the bottom. We're the highest margin control system uh, in the field, to my knowledge. You guys make a lot of money on this hardware compared to what the other hardware out there sells for. People drive the margins down on. We are not looking to drive down margins. We are looking to make people money. Uh, we might be more expensive up front, but the overall cost of ownership to a homeowner that scales their system up is normally less with Savant than our competitors because we scale systems up, number one, through software by opening up more rooms. There's no limit to how many rooms of lighting or security or climate you can have in the S2 processor. We only limit the number of zones of audio or video. But if you want to control more components in a house, say you had that media room, we have a series of controllers, right? Anything from $250 to $400 MSRP, you're scaling that system up. What do our competitors do? They keep adding more processors, more processors, more processors, more processors. Processors cost a lot more money than a controller, right? Now their processors might do load sharing, doesn't matter. We can continually to open this guy up through software. So some of our controllers, the most commonly one used is the SSC0012. SSD, SSC stands for Savant System Controller. The number stands for the number of control ports on it. So the SSC0012 has a total of 12 control ports on it. Six IRs, two 232s, two, relay, two relays, and two GPIOs. These are rack mountable. And for larger installs, it's very common that you see one or a couple of these in a job. They're also great if you have a home theater room or a media room that has local equipment in there. You just hardwire this guy to the network, it's online, and then you've got a controller in that room controlling all those local devices. 
If you don't need a whole bunch of control ports, we make a whole family of the Savant System Controller wireless, Wi-Fi. The W stands for Wi-Fi here. It means they have a Wi-Fi chip built in. All you need to do is get 5 volt power to them and they will communicate back to our processor over the 802.11 Wi-Fi network. We have three types of Wi-Fi controllers. We have the most common one, the SSCW003i. That is this guy right here, three IR ports. You have a question? No. Oh, cool. Uh, three IR ports. So I use these in all my secondary rooms in my house. I had spray foam in my house, so trying to get wires through spray foam is challenging, and I never want to do it again. Um, I just Velcroed this literally to the back of my TV with my DirecTV Genie box, with my Apple TV, and I controlled the television and those two products, and it couldn't have been a cleaner install that looked like I had centralized distribution. The response time is immediate as long as you have a decent network, and I've never had these guys ever fall offline. We make one for IR. We make a GPIO relay one. Talk about a garage door, right? You want to control a garage door? We'll put this right at the garage door and we can, as a, a contact closure or a relay, trigger that garage door, open or close, and get that feedback on the Savant Pro 8 app. You could use this to drop a projector screen, trigger a lift TV, trigger a gate to open. And again, if you can't get a wire, we don't care. We just want power and, and Wi-Fi coverage. The last guy is 232 to IP, so a 232 controller. Use case, you walk into a retrofit job, you install a security panel, but you don't have a wire there to control the security panel. You don't have a Cat5 or a Cat6 there. You can drop this controller there locally, connect it via 232, and then it's going to send that two-way 232 command set over the IP network back to our processor. These guys can solve a lot of different problems and a lot of different job types. There's no limit to how many controllers you can have in a job. We don't care how many devices you're controlling. Uh, with the S2 processor, we primarily care about how many rooms of audio or video you're doing. We also, at the next processor up, is called the S12. 12 zones of video, 18 zones of audio, right? I don't want to spin off and d dig into the weeds on that. And there's more processors that are much larger than that that are scalable as well. Uh, so that's the controllers. Any questions on the controllers? Yeah, when you're saying two rooms of video, you actually mean the switching is going on in your controller? No, the switch. processor? No, the limitation um, of two rooms. Yeah, sorry, sorry. The question was um, when you talk about two rooms of video, is the switching actually happening here? No, the switching is not happening here. Just the limitation of two rooms of video control is happening here. When we th the switching would be either done through a multi room AVR. Uh, an HDMI splitter could even do it, um, or you could have an independent AVR in each zone. That's kind of how we think about it. So let's talk about distribution a little bit. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about Savant Music. If any of you guys have been around the Savant world over the last decade or so, you've known that we've never owned our own music services. Back in 2008, when we came to market with our first music service, we levered this really cool product called the Logitech Squeeze Box. If you guys have ever touched one of those, it was a cool streamer. And then they just continued it, and we were like, oh crap, we don't have a music streamer anymore. Now what do we do? Uh, at that time, we were only using Mac Mini processors. Uh, we didn't have this cool guitar pick. Um, we just had Mac Mini, so we started leveraging the additional HDMI out of the Mac Mini and streaming iTunes. And then they switched to, I think, uh, a Thunderbolt and HDMI, and then we switched. We said, okay, we'll pull the music out of Thunderbolt and we'll use the HDMI uh, for processing. And then they got rid of all of those ports and we were kind of screwed again as far as music went. So then we inked a deal with a company called Autonomic, if you guys have ever heard of Autonomic software. And we were imaging Autonomic software directly onto our processor and streaming it out of the digital audio output. And we were also putting Autonomic software on our audio matrices and media streamers. Um, then SnapAV bought Autonomics, and all of a sudden their software started crashing our processors, and Autonomics software would take down an entire Savant system. Not good for our user experience. And obviously, who takes the blame for that? Savant does, right? So we got 
drug through the mud on other companies' problems. So we made an internal decision that we are never going to put our music eggs in somebody else's basket. And the number one priority of the 8.8 .8 release was owning our own music services and our own music streamers and having our own contracts with those streaming companies. So today, Savant has launched Savant 2.0 Music, which is our own internal music services and streaming. It's a rack mountable box streamer similar to what this size box looks like. You can put two of them right next to each other on a single U in a rack. On the initial launch, it's got all your major services, Spotify, Tidal, Pandora. Obviously, Savant has a close relationship with the guys in Cupertino, specifically our CEO. And at our summit, at our Savant Summit in January, we announced that we are in line for Apple Music as well, who currently only has an exclusive with Sonos. The second Savant gets Apple Music, it's big trouble for everybody else in the marketplace because that is a huge thing to have. And Sonos, um, although they're controllable, they force you into multi-app world. Uh, and you won't have that with Savant and Savant Music. And these guys are out and shipping today. Now we're going to talk about my. I had a question. Yeah. Are you back to your tech demo support? It's on our list for a few. Yeah, so the question was around the services. Let me go back here real quick to the services. Um, I mentioned Apple Music. The question was are we going to bring back Sirius XM? Um, yes, eventually we do plan on not only bringing back Sirius XM, but we have a laundry list of different services that we want to eventually contract and get brought into the Savant ecosystem. But it'll take time. Every couple releases, we'll start to bring more into the fold. So now I'm going to talk about my favorite product, which is the foundation of audio distribution inside Savant. Um, this is called the Savant IP50. This is an old one. It has our old name called the Pro Audio 4. Uh, internally, we used to call it the Hendrix for Jimi Hendrix. Um, You'll notice the size of this guy. It fits into a structured wiring can. We do a lot of Skyrise MDU business. Uh, if you guys are ever in Austin, Texas, every single Skyrise going up in Austin, Texas has a standard Savant system going into it or is offering Savant as upgrades. I used to live in Miami and we had a lot of condo Skyrise business there. And when you're selling 2,000 square foot condos, guess what they're not going to give you is a couple square feet for a rack, right? So we had to come up with a solution that we could mount into a structured wiring can. There's some really cool things I'm going to talk about here. Uh, number one, what this guy does by itself. But then you're going to hear me talk about AVB technology, audio video bridging. Anybody in here ever heard of AVB before, audio video bridging? A couple of you guys, awesome. Uh, this leverages AVB, which is audio, uh, audio over IP, hence the name, the IP50. So let's talk about what it is by itself. As a standalone audio matrix, this is why you guys wouldn't need to sell Sonos anymore. Once I get through this, you'll kind of see. So it's a four source input. Two digital in, two analog in. Four zones powered at 50 watts per channel. So th think about those as your distributed audio zones. And then you have two passive outputs, one fixed, one variable. So think about those going into your AVRs to support a surround sound zone. Think about those going into maybe a 70 volt amplifier for outdoor speakers. You guys know the use cases better than I do of why you would need those different types of uh, passive outputs and what you can use them for. If you notice, we built the functionality of the S2 processor around the capabilities of this product. That's how important this product is to the Savant architecture, that we literally built a processor around it not the other way around. In addition to those outputs, you've got some more, it's a controller. It's really inexpensive for Savant to manufacture control outputs on our different boxes. This is great for installers. They run into a jam. They need another IR, another 232. You can plug any IR or any 232 device in here and through the software you just tell it what it is. One other thing I forgot to mention that I want to bring back up again. Uh, we talked about the remote and then we talked about controllers. I always miss this point, but this always bails guys out. When you get on a job site, you don't always know what you're going to find, what you have to control. 
And you may buy a controller thinking you're going to be able to control everything in that room, and then you're like, holy crap, they have a combo VCR DVD player that's still in the rack that I have to control, and I didn't plan an IR output to control that. This is a wireless IR blaster. So if this is sitting in your media room, like this, you have a 270 degree IR blasting radius. It's shooting the IR out. And any IR device that's in its path, it can control. And in the software, you can tie up to five IR components to this base station. It's a wireless IR controller. It bails people out of jobs all the time. And then, of course, we build the control ports into a lot of our different hardware places. It just makes your job as installers much easier on the site. Today with this, you can group zones. Uh, you can group an amplified output and an, RC, uh, an RCA output for a, a speaker sub combo in a zone. Uh, of course, it's rack mountable. It's also structured wiring can mountable, and we have engravings here. So if it was in the can, you can actually see what you're doing when you're wiring it up. And for those guys that do a lot of production builder business, a lot, of my, a lot of my integrators that do production builder business have stopped selling Sonos because they don't make very much money on it, and the homeowner has to use the Sonos app to create their playlists and then use Savant to control it. So they've switched to this guy because it does have a stream of media, of Savant music run it, running on it additionally. So it is a media streamer, it is an amplifier, and it's a six zone audio matrix. Uh, and we put a consumer finish on it as well so it can sit right there in the media room, right on the right on the tabletop if you wanted it to. So you can add that device without any other Savant if you just wanted to do house music? Nope, you have to have a Savant. You always have to have a host. The question was is, um, can you use the Savant IP50 standalone for music in a home? Um, and the answer is you can't. It has to be tied. A Savant processor is necessary for any Savant job type, whether it's one room, or 60 rooms, you always need one host in that house. But without getting into too much detail on these guys, is they scale up over the AVB network, or over audio video bridging. Uh, so rather than daisy chain these guys, um, you would actually just put them on the network and then all of, their, all of their inputs are available across all of their outputs over the network. So we're actually using the network to do the matrixing if you're using multiple IP50s in a single job. And today, and we just put an order in from WAVE, you guys now have access to the bigger brother of the IP50, the IP125, which is 125 watt per channel of the same thing. Because of the larger amplifiers, this is only rack mountable, cannot go into a structured wiring can. A single stream of Savant music runs on all of these devices. I just moved, I live in Austin, Texas, and I just moved, um, I had a full rack, not quite that big, but stacked. You know, over the years, I probably collected forty dollars to $50,000 worth of Savant equipment, amplifiers, music streamers, everything. And when I moved out of my house, I learned that I could have done my entire house with this, not that whole rack. All I would have had to do was combine, I had seven zones of music, I could have combined two zones to get down to six, and I had enough processing power in the S2 to do everything I was doing in my house. So question. you said that only does four zones of audio. It does. Uh, the question was is how many zones of audio is the IP, it's, it's a four by six. But the processor itself will only support up to four zones? The processor support, the question is how many zones, the processor will support up to six zones of audio two zones of video. I only use my living room and my master bedroom for full uh, automation, so this would have worked for me versus this big, big rack. I thought that was interesting because this box is $2,500 MSRP. This guy is $500 MSRP. This guy is $500 MSRP. $3,500 MSRP, and look what I can do for that. If you were doing Sonos by itself, you're at $3,000 MSRP on a 30-point line, right? And you don't even have a control system. You just have a music player for that house. 
makes no sense in my view. And a lot of our a lot of our customers' views have moved away from Sonos for that reason. That you can get a better all-inclusive music experience through Savant than you can using a multitude of third-party products out there. Anytime you add a another IP50 or IP125 into an existing system, you continually get more streams of Savant music, meaning mom and dad can have their stream and the kids can have their stream and they can run independently of each other. Because we use that audio video bridging technology, which is a, uh, a, a triple E standard, Savant-like standards, uh, it almost VLANs uh, a portion of the network for audio streaming and audio sharing, so you'll never have buffering, you'll never have delays. I like the example, if you ever walk through an airport, they're playing music and then someone jumps over the loudspeaker and they're like, Karen, get to your gate, the plane's taking off. And then it goes right back to the music again. That's AVB happening in a large scale commercial spot. That's how powerful AVB really is. Okay, so that's gonna cover us on the audio distribution part for right now. Um, Savant internally has a whole bunch of standard audio matrices. We are totally moving away from those and going to a full AVB foundation. Almost 70% of our direct dealers across the country have transitioned away from an amplifier, an audio matrix, a digital to analog converter, and a long run speaker wire. They moved away from it. They're reducing their overall uh, uh, wire runs by about 60% and they never have the delay issues or the buffering issues um, with the IP50 or IP125. All right, let's move in to lighting. We're moving along pretty good here. Let me just check my clock. Okay, I've got 20 minutes. I can make that happen. Uh, all right, let's talk about lighting. Uh, we have a ton of updates coming in on the lighting interface. Um, obviously, a lot more RGBW featured functionality. Savant has an entire line, its own lighting line. I would compare it most commonly, if any of you guys are C4 guys, to the C4 lighting line. Most of you guys, I'm sure, are Lutron guys, so this would be comparable to the Lutron RAW 2 solution, uh, specifically from a functionality and from a price point perspective. Uh, the advantage that Lutron obviously has over us is they have a million different designs, colors, face plates, you name it, they have it. Our line is somewhat more limited than that. Walking you guys through it real quick, we have a standard auxiliary three-way switch, standard switch on off, standard dimmer, fan controller with a super sexy knob and a four button engravable keypad that's a hybrid. The button on the keypad will actually trigger a lighting load, right? So that's a hybrid. What you guys need to know about this, a couple things. The knob can be either tied to audio volume or dimming, not both. You have to decide when you set it up of whether this knob is controlling the audio in that zone or whether it's controlling dimming the lighting in that zone. There's different use cases for each. Obviously, if there's no audio in that zone, you're going to tie it for dimming. But maybe it's the kitchen. You've got audio on. You're cooking dinner. Your phone's ringing. What do you do? You know, do you have your music blasting? You just walk up and turn the volume down, answer your phone. You don't have to launch an app or anything like that. Another really cool thing that we do that nobody else in the industry does is we allow homeowner personalization on the keypad. One of these buttons on the keypad can belong to the homeowner. And through the Savant Pro 8 app, they can change the scene on this button. Three of them are configured by you guys. One of them is always owned or can be owned by the homeowner. So as the seasons change, as their life changes, as their, as their needs around automation changes, they can create a new scene in the Pro 8 app and apply it to this button. And they can change that as many times as they want. They can actually do the same thing with the dimmer. I didn't know about this. Will Banks, did you know about this? You can do it with the dimmer? As part of Creating scenes? Yes. I didn't know that until last week. On the dimmer, you can actually tie a scene to on or off. So you could say, Instead of turning a specific load on, it could turn an entire room on or turn an entire room off. So this is essentially a keypad. Yeah. yeah, inside the software environment. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, yeah, what was the question, Matt? Can you tie a scene to the... Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, on the dimmer, you can tie, the question was, is can you tie a scene to the switch? Um, in this case, on, on a dimmer, you can tie a scene to on or off, just like you can tie a scene to one of the four keypad buttons on the keypad. I'm going to fly through these guys, and we'll just show the pricing so you guys can see it. These guys come in white and snow white. I'm just kidding. Uh, they come in white, snow white, light almond, and then there's a black conversion kit for them if you needed to convert them into black. So those are the four colors right now. Savant does have another whole entire lighting line in, in R&D right now. So there's another whole entire lighting line coming behind this probably in the next six months that include full six button keypads that come with full button trays. Uh, and if you guys get your hands on this, you can see our buttons are concave and our new line will be convex because that's what interior designers want apparently. You guys can see the pricing here. We're very much in line with where Lutron, Raw 2, C4, and the other guys are. These are a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi lighting line. It's really cool. I'm going to talk about software at the very end, but our new software tool coming out, they connect via Bluetooth. You just walk up to the switch with your iPhone or your iPad, and you connect to them Bluetooth, and you name it, and you configure it. You tie it as the Luxol guys were saying, you know, we'll tie these to an access point because they're not moving around, they're not roaming, so we tie it to an access point. Uh, and then they communicate back to our processor via Wi-Fi. So very much a Bluetooth low energy and a Wi-Fi world. These guys also, so these guys have Bluetooth chips in them as, long, as well as Wi-Fi chips. These guys generate a Bluetooth mesh network in your home. And when I get to the light bulbs, you'll kind of understand why we do that. We have a standard lamp module. This is used for two things. Obviously, it's used to automate lamps. Uh, it's also used, if you don't have the Savant Metropolitan lighting line in your home, this guy is also a Bluetooth gateway or bridge, right? Savant doesn't integrate natively with Zigbee and Z-Wave devices. That's just not the way our company runs. We believe that there's issues in, in and sluggishness uh, as well as scalability with those technologies, uh, which is why we use uh, Wi-Fi 802.11 and why we use Bluetooth. Um, but if you're in a home that doesn't have metropolitan lighting, say you have Lutron RAW 2 there, but you want to add the Savant True Image Experience, which is that RGBW uh, uh, user interface where you can press the light and tie it, you just need to introduce a lamp module as the BLE bridge into that home. My last home had RAW 2 in it, so for me to do true image, I had to introduce one of these lamp modules to bridge me to my light bulbs. We've been talking all day about the Savant Pro 8 app. I just want to let you guys know, if you guys really want to get a taste of what Savant can do, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money up front, I just had them load, load the shelves up there with our light bulbs. We have a separate app called the Savant Lighting True Image app. All you do is download the app, you turn the Bluetooth on in your phone. It will scan for the lights. The Bluetooth in your phone will find the lights. And you program the light bulbs right from here. You take pictures and you create your own user interface. It is do it yourself, essentially. It's all done right from here. Anybody can do it. It is super cool. Once you fall in love with it, which I know you will, you can incorporate it. You can move it into the Pro 8 system. So again, true image, as you saw in the video, the image actually reflects the room itself and changes real time against colors, dimming, anything like that. And it is a patented technology. Nobody can touch us. These are the three types of light bulbs we have. We have indoor and outdoor BR30s as well as standard A19 bulbs for lamps. And then we also have strips. Uh, Matt Wilbanks back there was telling me earlier about this really cool setup he did in his bedroom. So at nighttime you can kind of see the bed. I know a lot of people do it around racks. They do it underneath countertops, underneath bars. Again, this is full, full RGBW spectrum. 20 year lifetime. Okay, cool. All right, last product we're talking about today. I just got one of these guys. This is the brand new Savant Multistat. 
Um, we can throw it into, well, I need to update the firmware to get it into a, a, an actual running demo mode, but you guys can get a feel for it. We've been working on this for quite some time. Uh, we don't necessarily integrate with cloud-based thermostats because we can't control the experience. If the, if the pipeline between the Amazon AWS cloud and the Nest thermostat breaks and the homeowner is using the Savant application, guess whose fault it is that their thermostat doesn't work? It ain't Nest's fault. It's my fault and it's your fault, right? That's who the customer is gonna yell at. Savant sucks and my integrator sucks because I can't change the temperature even though it has nothing to do with either of our companies. So although we can backdoor those products using a Vera Edge, which is a Zigbee Z-Wave or Cloud Bridge, um, they're kind of funky and not great. Um, our preference and what we chose to do was build a better thermostat than what those companies offer. We call it the Savant Multistat. And it's a multi-stat because it's a touch panel or another user interface inside that home, just like a touch panel is inside that home. You have three-stage heating, two-stage cooling, you have fan control. There, today there's a separate humidity sensor for it, which I know is important down here, especially in Houston. You can swipe this screen just like you can on the remote and all your global scenes populate. You can swipe the screen the other way and your local seven-day forecast populates. Uh, Wave has these on order. They start shipping. Uh, final production starts shipping tomorrow, so they'll be available next week. And we do have another standard Wi-Fi thermostat that's available through Wave as well. And again, after this training, we have a live demo running outside, and both DT and Matt and myself will be around to answer any specific questions you guys want to drill into. This is all the stuff we've covered today. Just about. We didn't, we didn't cover speakers. There's a lot of speakers here already. Uh, and what we're going to cover next is the software. But we covered all the UIs, the lighting, audio, processing, climate, voice control. We covered a lot of products. And now I want to tell you guys, I'm going to tease you guys real quick. The whole world hasn't even heard about this yet. They're going to hear about it soon. It is a game changer. 15 years ago, Savant changed the way automation was done by introducing the first purely software-based configuration tool to deploy large-scale automation systems. We took the deployment time down nearly 75% on six-figure deployments. This was huge. Savant grew rapidly behind this technology. 15 years later, we're changing the game again, and we're going to introduce to the world Savant Studio, which is Savant's blueprint environment for an iPad. It is a big hurdle for installers to buy all their technicians a $3,000 MacBook Pro, especially the technicians that hate Macs <laughs> because they're PC guys or whatever. Because Savant is an OSX-based company, we're always going to program from an OSX-based tool. But now you can self-configure, name your rooms, and auto-configure the system directly from an iPad. Really focused around the products that we talked about today, the S2 processor, the family of Savant remotes, the family of touch panels, the family of controllers, the family of audio and, and distribution systems. But then the question is, hey, that's awesome. I can configure these quick cookie-cutter systems on the fly, get in and out of jobs. They auto-configure. The partner to Savant Studio, what the real game changer is in the background, is Savant Central Management, or what we've just recently changed the name to, Savant Cloud Management. So we will be introducing, in conjunction with the Studio tool, a battleship of a cloud architecture, which allows technicians to take their configuration, throw it up to the cloud, allow your more advanced programmers like Lewis here to grab it from the blue into Blueprint, configure all types of custom crap, blow that system up, and send it right back to that technician on the field over the cloud to deploy that system. We can introduce automation as a service through Wave. Wave will be able to pre-configure, pre-automate, and pre-load the software and configurations directly through SEM to your jobs. You will have full visibility of every single one of your customers. Similar to what the Luxall guys were saying, 
You can see anything that's communicating to our processor. You guys can see whether it's online, offline. You guys can remotely program your systems. This Savant Cloud Manager backs up all of your homes. Lightning strike takes out the processor. Good, get a new processor, pull the entire configuration down, all their scenes, all their personalization, all their rooms, everything pre-populates. Everything goes over the air updates going forward. You guys can push everything over the air to the customer. The amount of truck rolling, which is not significant in the Savant world as it is today, will be even further reduced. This will allow for significantly more profitability within your organizations, whether you're doing a ton of cookie cutter jobs or whether you're doing very large uh, configured systems. So I will leave you guys off with that. This is the future. Uh, you're going to hear about this in the next 30, 60 days. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions for it after, after this session. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much for spending the time with us. Thank you. Sometimes that takes me three hours. What if you were to step up past two videos and be a second processor? Yeah, there's another processor. It looks exactly like this. We just, through software, we open it up. And it allows for 12 zones of centralized video distribution, 18 zones of audio distribution. Above that, we go to a Mac Mini, which is completely unlimited in all cases. And above that, it's called the Superhost, which is the new Mac Mini bazooka-looking guys. And we do full redundancy on those guys. It's a 14 inch rack mountable super pro Mac minis and that's for jobs that have over 2,500 or 3,000 active services simultaneously. Do you have a, a, do you have a list of third party devices that you have to choose from? We do inside our programming environment blueprint uh, which is the Mac based blueprint environment and it will be available in studio as well. There's a library and it's just a drop down and you can search it whether it's a, a source, a manufacturer, a type of component. You can type in HVAC and every single HVAC component from every manufacturer that we support will be there. Yeah. What was MSRP on the thermostat? So the, <laughs> uh, the question was, what's the MSRP on the new Savant Multistat? Um, like I said from the beginning, we're about making money. It's at uh, Savant. This is a $550 MSRP thermostat. Yeah. It's a lot more money than you'll make on selling an S thermostat, that's for sure. <laughs> it's also a touch panel. It's a user interface. We charge $850 for a touch panel, right? You don't need this if you have this. Now, I'm not saying you can play your Spotify or Tidal music from here like you can from here, but you could certainly activate a scene that plays your Tidal or Spotify music from here. So there are locations in the home where you're going to say, Mr. Customer, you don't need an $850 touch panel. I was going to put a thermostat in that room anyway, and it will work as your touch panel also. But if you have that, touch, that thermostat, you'll have access to You can the control it from here. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. You can control the thermostat from whether your Pro Remote, your Android or iOS app, um, or a touch panel, yeah. or even Alexa or Google Home. <laughs>